Well, the man who's got an identity crisis uh, there, Mr. Jones, it's Mr. Philip Phillips. So, it is like, oh no, I turned, I turned this up just a tad. Yeah, you can tell who that is. That's um, the cobra of... Uh, <laughs> but but, is, but is, it, is it a cobra or is it, or is it, a, or is it a python race car? Well, it's listed in the entry as a cobra. Okay. That's almost certainly not an AC. No, no, definitely. They all call themselves cobras of some sort or another. Mm. Yes, yeah, the uh, muscle car sprints are back on the circuit. And. Um, that thundering GPT motorsport. Oh, that's just let go, Jonesy. Oh, Jeff Taunton. Oh dear. What was that tire smoke? That might have just. No, no, mm. something's unhappy. No, mm. look. No, if if it wasn't a thing, that, that looks like a. Oh, that's in trouble. It's. No, no that's letting go. Is that tire smoke? It's he's from the back of the he's car. He's got a wheel loose. Is that that's it. Is? That's either come through a diff seal, or he's got a wheel loose. I don't think he's aware of it yet because he's, you can hear from the engine note that he's pushing. It's from the left side specifically. It might be that the left it, rear it, isn't it, attached uh, properly. Or, or is it a diff seal? Or a diff seal, as he said. That, an actual seal, actually, is what it is. Now, it's, when he, and it's on throttle when he brakes and he takes... So that might be, that might be in fact, anything coming onto the brake lines, too. It could be, um, it could be brake fluid. Yeah. But that's to be more like a fire if that was brake fluid. Uh, the rotors aren't real hot yet, but they're getting that way, aren't they? Oh, geez, yeah. that's worse. Uh, why are we calling him in? Sasha, Sasha's off. Maybe the driver can't hear Doug yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> that's a loud race car. The Actually, uh, Phil Cron Phil he's Cron aware of it now, I think. Phil Crompton just got in trouble for that too. Oh, that's that's lit. That's all we're in that wheel after him. It is, isn't it? Yeah, what he's, he's aware of it, he hasn't backed off. It's more the left than the right. As we watch the... Uh, it's just in that wheel arch, don't yeah. it? Yeah, as we watch Taunton's Cobra consume itself. <laughs> What's consuming a tyre or doing something? It's stunning. I, I can see I can see our flaggy looking at it too, watching it go around. It's coming up, it's, it's disappearing pretty quickly. And I still go, look, oh, this, this, this is amazing. Well, then it's starting to get, it's going to get a lot worse now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's waving at him. Oh, that's, it's that's a tie. It's definitely a tie. Look, it's shredded. Yeah, it's just let go. It's like, it's still, it's, well, it's coming out of both sides now, though, oh, too, but yeah. that could be venting from being caught yeah, under yeah. the back of the body. But whatever it is, it's not happy. And it's, I don't, has everyone else come back in? I think they have. Well, I don't think anyone else had really gone out. So, whatever it is, it's not happy. And I think it's, um, I think it's more than just the car that's unhappy at the moment. If, it, if it's a tyre, it's worn a groove and it's thick enough to, it, it, it'd be down to China at the moment. Yeah. Well, he's making a hand grooved intermediate uh, with using the um, using the wheel arch flare. Mm. Possibly not. It's, no, it's more than that. Yeah. So I don't even think it's tired, James. I think it's what I thought it was in the first place. It's axle seal coming out of the axle or something like that. And he's uh, pulling in to the crossover. So you notice even me on the camera view there, but. Well, it's not as pronounced as the dipper, there is still I an elevation drop in yeah. the middle of the crossover there. Nice There's camera shot actually from the boys. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, let's get Cover that nicely. So, well what else has happened? Well, he's set at 16.8 while pumping out all of that smoke and reefing the QR with... Um, yeah. You're all clear to find it. Someone's so. Oh. Uh, now we're looking across at the Mustang of Lawrence Densley. Mm. Now, um, I think it's a retro tech Mustang, that one. You notice it's got the very low profile tyres that you would never normally associate with a, um, well, a car like they, a Mustang. They, they refer uh, to it on Mecham Auto Auctions as a resto mod. 
rest of mods. It's, no, it's, it's got some new technology in it, some bigger, some bigger wheels and stuff. It's great, actually. The car looks like it. he's having a ball of fun in it. Mm. And he's doing yeah. what he wants to do. Like he's oh, yeah, having, yeah, having yeah. some fun. I guess I didn't mean to... No, 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 no. No, it's, it's, not, it's not running to Group N spec. It's not running well. to, to, to Trans Am spec. It's, it's running sprints. It's a sprint, so he's run what he's got. He's having a ball yeah. of fun. You could sprint your ED Falcon, it'll look funny because they built an ED Falcon sprint, just saying. But, um, yeah, I think there's, I might that, need there's to. that red Tirana too, there, Jonesy, too. Uh, a, a very, very predominant category. Might need to replace the bushes before I did anything like that with uh, the Falcon. So I just got the guys picking up another shot there. That's the one I want. Uh, David is. Malone uh, Sports Sedan. Yeah, that car's a, a normal a competitor too at most of the sprint events we go to, Jonesy. And uh, was that Mount Cotton uh, Hill Climb just a couple of weeks ago for the Queensland Hill Climb yeah. Championships? Yeah. Tell you what, it was a competitive field at yeah. the QHCs this year. All open wheel top 10. You don't. That doesn't normally happen in the Queensland Hill Climb yeah. grids. But, yeah, it was an all-open-wheel top ten. This is what I was talking to Laurie Watson about. There's so many of these LJ Tiranas sitting out there that are sports sedans at the moment that uh, it's unbelievable. There's, there'd, be, there'd, be, there'd be four I know of that are sitting in sheds. And there's about a dozen escorts of varying descriptions. Yeah, but this, the, this two, these two body shells, that Tirana body shell was amazing. There's, there's some cars down south that are still logbook well. as six-cylinder cars too, by the way, because that was the GA. Yeah, well, well that's this um, David Malone's uh, Tirana is it's a six-cylinder six as well. well the, 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 the thing was, they were a budget sports sedan that you go a lot mm. faster with. They're running um, the 13-inch wheels, but slicks um, still running what they did. So they were just a, they were a great car. Well, they're 14-inch wheels, 13-inch, I think, if I remember. But he's uh, he's doing a good job of keeping up, pa uh, keeping pace with that uh, the, mus the the, the mm. V8 Mustang in front of him. Yeah. That's a car of Densley. Well, the um, Densley's car is a road car, so I expect actually the Malone Tirana to be faster. He'd probably be, he'd probably down a, down a hundred or so horsepower though. Yeah. Corner you know speed. The, should, um, corner speed should have him though, if we, which he does. The Tirana does run. That Tirana in particular does run fairly small rims. Yeah, fairly running, fairly small wheels running the thirteen. Yeah. I was saying running the thirteen yeah. inch wheels before. Like, well, in fact, um, it's one of Rod Dawson's first race cars was an early Tirana Sports sedan as well. Yeah, okay. Well, I remember that because he used to work on it down at the garage. It was across the road from home. Hmm. It's my first met Rod years ago, and he was um, a, a, a just just a mere motor mechanic. If Rod was ever just that. <laughs> Tremendous talent behind the wheel doors. Oh dear, yeah. He's um. You know the um. You know the old um phrase about like um. Molly Lewis can play State of Origin blind and folded because um he knows every inch, every blade of grass on on Lane Park. Mm. You know, Rod Rod Dawson's like that with the race tracks of Queensland. Oh, but he's an internal map, and he could put his race helmet on backwards, and he could still he could still qualify in the top five yeah, of amazing, any field. Amazing. Yep, go. Okay. He's probably done more laps around Lakeside than anyone other than maybe Dick Johnson and Tony Longhurst. Here comes Team Wedge. The, uh, yeah, the, 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 black, TR7. the black TR7 TR8, actually, don't you? Uh, TR7 V8, which makes it an older model. Yeah, which is the converter the car, but they're still TR8s, because that's what they were never produced. They were all, all, all changed from TR7s. Um, they w actually, there was a transition. They did actually, yeah, they weren't, the V8s were originally called a TR7 V8, but later in the production run they started calling them TR8s. And they were, so, and, uh, and of course, running the, uh, most of them were, were the 3.5 litre V8, although yeah. a lot of the guys are converted and made them 12, yeah. 4.4 litres. Which Colin Bond do. took one to win the Australian Rally Championship yeah. in about 1982. Ask Colin Bond how good that car was too, by the way, I'll tell you. <laughs> He said it was unbelievable. He said you could just drive it anywhere. He said it was so precise. He said it really lent itself to be a good car. Popular car for Target Tasmania to the TR or any Target mm. event or any sprint event really like that. A wide footprint for its uh, wheelbase which would have made it a, uh, which would have made it fairly just good for a rally car. You don't have to rev it hard to get to get the best out of it. it it's a tremendous amount of torque if you're running the bigger engine in it. Um, and, and you're not working it overly hard to get the pace out of it. So, yeah, good car for that. And the alloy block, of course, is uh, well, reasonably well, light. Well, in fact, it wasn't much more heavier than the four-cylinder engine that was in them as well, in mm -hmm. the TR7. Uh, most, of the, most of the people who have ever, ever driven a TR7 will tell you that the four-cylinder engine's not worth a, 
not not with a pinch of yeah. Mm. It's um nice car, but just the V8 makes it so much nicer car. In fact, yeah. in fact talking about that, um, I was talking to Alan Greenbury through the week. Alan Greenbury's now purchased himself a Ford Anglia as well. Uh, to, which is a car that was rich road registrable, but it's also a race car as well. So I expect to see that car on the racetracks very shortly. Not that silver one that we see out here occasionally. Yep. No, no, red, no, 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 a red one with silver roof, believe it or not. Okay. Here's a lovely looking GT now. We're going to see you come up. Yeah. Yeah. Car, is that comes to the name, Mr. Jensen? Well, if you had a blue V8 Ford, then 17 is pretty much the wanted number. Yeah, it is the colour, isn't it? It's, it's the colour that suits the thing. <laughs> For a Queensland Ford, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like the Dell factory race team at the time were. Um, Oh, hang on, the XWs. Yeah, no, they were red and black then, the factory race team. That sort of slightly orangey red. Yeah, what the... She's, what is that colour? Middle block, I don't know the colour. Bramble's red. Um, Crimson fire. And, tra and, and track red too, there was a colour. Mm. But no, the, the, it came to mind that uh, probably the most popular colour for XWs was a company called Outback Bronze. Ah, uh, yes. Nice car, this. Cover there, the uh, limited run of the um, uh, Bathurst 500 GTs uh, that the, um, the Gallagher um, XT Falcons yeah. were brought that but bronze colour yeah, and they carried it. And they didn't, they had a special name for it along with the, um, something to do with um, the Gallagher thing that was linked up with the, it was then the Bathurst 1000 or Bathurst 500 miles sponsor. The most, probably the most, unfor uh, the most forgotten car in its GTs in those days. Yeah, the XT, yeah. Came, came on, it was the start of the change into the bigger engine, the Mustang mm. engine, which the, the evolution of the, the so Boss 302 style yeah. engines, of course. Yeah. Well, the XT was monstered by the um, by the first Monaris. Yeah. So that's sort of why it was... Um, well, the, the XR started it all, of course. With the 289. Yeah. And then and the XT came with the 302. Yeah. And of course, then came uh, then, then came the, the Holdens were running 327s and 350s, so they had the. Well, they run 327s and then run 350s when yeah. the XW first came out. It's because the 350 wasn't ready. No. And um, when the HK Monaro came out, so um, they were they sort of were rushed a little bit and brought the um, 327 Chevrolet out to stick into the GDS Monaro. But then when the um, HT model came out, the uh, 350 was ready by then. Yes. It was lovely to see the history of Australian motorsport coming out to play. This is the interesting part of this. It's good to see these guys here having some fun. Yeah. The, um, I'm just trying to remember whether it was the XT or the XW that had the Wii word deflated ad. I think it was the XW because that was the, um, the phase one, if you like, GDHO. And um, they put Firestone Racing rubber on the, uh, on the Falcons at Bathurst in 1970, that would have been. No, 69. Oh, that was the PA just out on the paddock. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I just, we were sorry. hearing a here, and it's really unusual tone. I couldn't work out what we were hearing. Just looking for uh, a couple of other cars out there on track at the moment. They've all spread themselves apart. Yeah, we're looking at Hanton at the moment, who's uh, in the TS7. Team Wedge, who's and uh, Team Wedge, it's an interesting name, because that's what the car does look like, doesn't it? It does yeah. look like a wedge, I suppose, if you think about it. Well, the, um, that sort of 1970s styling where they were going all wedge all the time. With uh, Lancia Stratos and the Lamborghini Contash and um, Ferrari where, where the had a look car, at it. Where have the rest of the cars gone? Uh, they sort of... Well, they're out there. Well, maybe they aren't, actually. No, the, all the cars are... I think we're really running to the to the last end of this. Well, David Malone's still out there in the uh, Toronto XU1 yeah. sports sedan, and also um, uh, Jensen's. No, that's Jensen was on camera then, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, well, Malone and uh, Densley and Hen and Jensen are out there, as well as Hanson. Two flags come out for the end of the session anyway, Josie, so... Yeah. Fastest man there was Torn. Well, it wasn't one of them. That surprises. Horworth's Mustang actually pulled in. Horworth's car looks stunning. What's, com what's coming up next, Jonesy? Well, we have another motor race. We have... It sounds to me like they're all V8. Um, well, this is Queensland Touring Cars, actually. Race 2 for Queensland Touring Cars. The largely Holden versus BMW battle. 
All right, James, let's take a break. Back in the other side of this very quick break. We'll be back with some great racing coming your way. Two days of thunder here at Queensland Raceway. Brought to you by Shannon's.